Hello and welcome everyone to today's pre-final segment, also known as the developer update for update 10.7, also known as the Black Sun expansion. And uh, I've got Jean here. Welcome, Jean. Thank you for joining me. Hey, hey, always a pleasure. Yeah, always a pleasure, especially because we've got the honor to reveal the final cards of this upcoming expansion. And before we jump into that, uh, let's just get one thing out of the way. I've got a little bit of a cold, um, but I don't know how I managed to catch that. It's 33 degrees outside, but it's uh, fine. I'm fine and I'm very happy to be here. So, um, yeah, I think we'll start off with a little bit of a recap. Don't worry, it's not going to be too in-depth or too long, but we'll just go through the factions that we've revealed so far. And uh, after that, we'll go straight into the final reveals. And then following that, we'll round off today with covering the upcoming balance changes as well. All right, so unless you've got anything before, no? No, let's go, let's go. All right, I'm excited. So let's kick things off. We revealed monsters and uh, what do you have to tell us about it? Well, first of all, I want to talk about, uh, you know, the expansion as a whole. And we had two uh, major goals that, well, are not very obvious, which is that, first of all, we wanted to come back to the scenario, uh, introduce a new one for each faction. And the second one was introducing this new infusion mechanic which was a mechanic that uh, we'd been longing to play with for quite some time, so we're very, very happy to be introducing it. And so we're kind of playing with it uh, in each faction. And in Monsters, uh, we decided to come back to uh, the Thrive archetype. And uh, like we play with it in different ways, right? We have scratch a lot in one hand, you have a man trap that's able to trigger it multiple time. And uh, that's also able to infuse Thrive to units that may or may not already have it. Yeah, I think, um, especially one person, but probably more, will be happy to see the plant archetype being fleshed out as well. Uh, <laughs> and of course, Thrive, I think, has been um, quite fun, at least for me, in the past. So I'm happy to find some new tools in that box. And yeah, why? Why would you uh, be unhappy about a new cat in the game? So I think that's awesome. <laughs> All right, so after Monsters, let's take a quick look at yesterday's reveals of the Nilfgaard faction. And here we can see four new cards. Tell me all about it, John. Yeah, for Nilfgaard, we are introducing the Cult of the Eternal Eclipse. Uh, it's a standard package, and the point was that you could include it with other existing package by turning these uh, cards into cultists. And uh, the cult is basically acting as a pyramid scheme, right? <laughs> well, the later your cultists are going to join the board, the worse the rewards are going to be. Yeah, that, uh, that seems pretty realistic to me. Um, <laughs> thank you very much for that. Uh, also going to be interesting to see how much uh, this is going to be combined with different archetypes that Nilfgaard already have available because uh, I think that there's some there's some interesting combinations, especially with obviously some some um, status uh, archetypes and, and other cards of Nilfgaard. All right, moving on to the Northern Realms. We, re we revealed Northern Realms on Friday, or our partners did, so thank you for that. And they have a new keyword to play with, which is grace. So why don't you tell me about it? Yeah, so uh, with Northern Realm, obviously, Knights. Uh, um, it's also coming with a bunch of reworks to existing Knights, so you'll hear about that more into this video. Um, and the introduction of that new Grace keyword basically allowing us to provide goals uh, for you to boost your units, right? Uh, by giving you rewards if you prove worthy of these rewards, right? Like being mm -hmm. boosted enough. Um, that's it for now. Yeah, very gracious. <laughs> All right, moving on to Buddha's favorite faction, the Skoyatel. And for Skoyatel, we are coming back to Harmony, right? Long-awaited topic. Yes. Um, but the thing is, we really wanted to use Infusion for Harmony uh, with designs like Antarian that's able to actually give Infusion to other units, uh, but also Chameleon that's able to use Infusion as a way to play around categories so 
Long awaited, but we think it's going to be worth it. Also long awaited has been the support for the Skelliger Pirate archetype. Um, we've had it in the game for a long time, but I think it missed that little extra touch to bring it over the edge. So let's take a look at those cards. Yeah, in the case of Skelliger, we decided to use Infusion as a way to inject negative death wish, uh, which basically rewards you if you are able to kill your opponent units. So a very Skelliger thing. Yeah, Skellig is all about killing the enemies, and uh, those Death Witches uh, can't be prayed away easily, so <laughs> you're going to protect your cards against Skellig. All right, and finally, moving on to Syndicate, we've got In Search of Forgotten Treasures and cards supporting it. So what is this all about? Yes, this is all about Tide Cloaks, and more specifically, the Horde mechanic. Uh, in the case of... Uh in the case, we had this you know, kind of complex problem where the jackpot uh, leader ability is very happy to basically always be at nine coins, right? Which means that uh, it's kind of easy to achieve a word. So the challenge here was to make it in such a way that cash uh, had its own specific value. And the answer to this was leaning a lot toward uh, reducing hoard and getting synergies by doing so. Uh, which gives the archetype a very, you know, uh, gritty engine uh, identity. All right, and that's it for the recap. So, that was a quick rundown of the cards that we have re revealed so far. Thank you once again to all our lovely partners for creating those awesome reveals. I think it's been a ton of fun and um, yeah, lots of effort put into those. Can't wait for the next reveal campaign. But first, we've got this one. And, oh boy, <laughs> I've been waiting for this for quite a while now. Um, let's kick things off with the first neutral of this expansion. And we've got a special someone that I think maybe some people already know about. But let's take a look at Eltibald. Six strength, 11 provision gold card. And he's a human mage with the ability Zeal Order. Infuse an enemy unit with whenever your opponent plays a card, damage yourself by one. Cooldown three. Whenever you play a cursed card, reduce cooldown by one. Yeah, so once you get a good grasp of how infusion works, this card is relatively straightforward. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, that's about is basically calling on prophecies, right? It's condoning uh, your opponent's unit to slow it's impending doom. Mm -hmm. um, though you can technically infuse the same card multiple times over if you want it to, you know, tick down even mm. faster. You really need to be killing something. Okay. Um, and of course, each sign of curse is urging as able to work quicker, right? So reducing your cooldown and allowing <laughs> you to put this infuse effect even more. Very interesting. So. Technically, this only gets better if you play multiple cards, um, I guess. And yeah, so you're dooming your opponents by playing your own cards and damaging them. That's that's very cool. And the artwork is also pretty awesome. That's pretty awesome. All right, that is the gold. And the second to last card is, let's take a look at Renfrey's Gang. Six power, six provision bronze card, human bandit and cursed. And they read deploy. If your starting deck has at least 25 units, summon all copies of self from your deck to this row. Okay, so <laughs> we've got the yeah. name in the card's name already. So I think um, before we talk about this ability in depth, we should probably take a look at the final reveal of this expansion, right? Yeah, it will make more sense uh, once we get to the next one. Yeah, especially the condition. All right, so it is time, everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, the card everyone's been waiting for, not Dagon, the other card everyone's been waiting for, <laughs> is finally coming to Gwent. So let's take a look at Renfrey. Oh, oh, oh boy, what a beautiful artwork. What a card, uh, obviously a gold card, a neutral card, so every faction can run it. Two power, 10 provision, 
and she's a human bandit, also cursed, obviously. And her ability reads, deploy melee, discard a unit, and boost self by its power, then draw a card. Finally, finally, this card ability is back in the game. Uh, I know the community has been waiting for it. What's, what's this, Ryan? What do you mean? I mean, I mean this wasn't the effect. Oh, yeah. Um, so, 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 so um, you know, I, I scrolled through Reddit a little bit and uh, I saw multiple people telling uh, the developers that we should reintroduce this ability because they felt it's been missing for, for a while now or hasn't been printed on any new cards. So I thought this would be the perfect opportunity, you know, to, to, to introduce it into the game. So I made a little bit of an adjustment to your original idea. I guess. Oh, I mean, I guess if that's what the community wants, uh, that, that does make sense. Um, you, you sure about this one? I'm sure, but uh, you know what? Just let me let me let me get some uh, community experts on this, and then I'll maybe maybe uh, convince you further. All right? Okay, okay sure. Hello, uh, Doctor Courtship. If I'm correct, uh, you are the Renfrey guy. If uh, I'm correct as well, um, how do you pronounce your name correctly? Um, yeah, it's Dr. Fortune. You've got it right. It's, uh, it's based on a character I made when I was like eight years old or something like that. He's like a mad scientist. So that's the, the context. Right? And you're the person behind the uh, daily custom cards until Renfrey is released, right? So why don't you tell me quickly how that journey started? So I actually made like a mini Skellige expansion like before I made the Renfrey series and I loved making that so much. I kind of wanted to start making custom cards and at the same time I was reading um, the Witcher books, specifically I read The Lesser Evil with Renfrey, and I was really impressed with her character, and I've been noticing there were quite a few characters that hadn't been added to the game yet. You know, I've actually got a little list. I've got, you know, Essie Davin, um, I think there's like Falca, there's Viggy the Loon, who I really like. I think that's a CDPR original character. But at the time I was reading The, Le the Lesser Evil, I was really impressed with the Renfrey character, just the way um, Andrei Sapkowski described her, you know, her actions, her motives, I just thought it was quite interesting. So I thought that was a good uh, good reason to start a campaign. Yeah, I, I think lots of people enjoyed that and Renfrey is definitely a very cool character. So I assume that you must be quite happy to hear that we are finally bringing Renfrey to Gwent. It is time. It is time. Yeah, you can't imagine. You've got your, your mission was successful, so now uh, I just want to get a final feel for the community sentiment and the expectations of the community. So I thought, why don't I just get it from the man himself? Um, so yeah, without further ado, let me send you the card. Here it is. Hmm. That's total garbage. What's going on? Is there something wrong with the CDR like chain of command or something? Or. Uh, Wait, you, you, you don't like the ability? That's that's just that's that's honestly the worst ability I've ever heard of. I can't imagine that. <laughs> thank you, thank you so much for your feedback. <laughs> um, I, I don't want to name names or anything, but uh, I'll definitely make sure that the designers get the get the message. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll have to move on from now. I've got got to go back to Jean. Um, but yeah, thank thank you for your time. Hey Jean, I'm back. Um, I just I just talked to uh, Dr. Kolchit, the uh, the Renfrey specialist, and um, he did uh, he did like the idea, but did tell me it's not quite working out for him uh, or the community in that sense. So yeah, I think in the end it might be better to go back to your uh, original idea, even if it's not as exciting. But, um, but yeah, oh, okay, um, it's. Probably not as good as the one you had, but uh, will work, I guess. We'll do what we can, you know. All right. Yeah. So it's time. Let's take a look at the uh, at the real ability now that we're gonna introduce into the game of Renfrey. <laughs> there she is. Seven power. Seven's better than two. Uh, Thirteen provision, and still a human bandit curse. But her ability now reads: Deploy. If your starting deck has at least twenty-five units. Create a curse to replace your leader ability, then create a blessing and infuse your leader ability with it. First of all, 
Here we can see uh, the condition that is required to play this card is the same for Renfri's Gang. So we'll talk about Renfri's Gang a little bit after this. But uh, yeah, tell me what exactly you've got in mind for this card. Yeah, there is a lot to unpack. Uh, well, it, it looks kind of simple like this, but uh, trust me, there's more to it. <laughs> uh, let's talk about the condition first. Um, this is a new condition, right? 25 units. Mm -hmm. Um, and the reason we decided to go for this condition is because in this card drop, uh, well, as you guys know, we introduced the scenario for each uh, faction. And uh, we wanted Renfree to be something um, that makes you play differently, right? And uh, if you want to use the new scenarios, go ahead. And, but uh, if you want to use Renfree, you're going to have to give, the, give up on them. And uh, it's not only scenarios, right? It's also uh, your usual consistency tools, right? Like stuff like on your Mency, mm -hmm. you know, probably you don't have access to it. Uh, it's also your removals, right? Cause like heat wave. Ooh. Um, though technically, you you can always run a 26, 27 cards mm -hmm. deck. Then uh, you're also paying the price, right? Right? Uh, less provision to dedicate, uh, oh, yeah. less consistency, etc. And yeah, I guess we can move to the next part of Renfri, which is uh, so. Then, if you pay that price, right, uh, what you get in exchange is uh, you get to create a curse. And let's show uh, some of the curse, right? All right. So, so here's the list of all the curses, right? Yeah. Um, so curse. Uh, what is there under this name is uh, seven new leader ability, which are completely unique to Renfri. And uh, yeah, you basically get to create one, so three out of the seven, and and that game that comes to replace uh, your leader ability. And it's not only that, but then you get to do the same with a blessing. Uh -huh. And uh, let's go through the blessings now. So the blessings are uh, ability that you're gonna use to your leader ability. Uh, so same as before, you get create, so three out of the seven, and you pick one, and it gets infused, and that's going to be basically the positive effect of your leader ability, ah. uh, which you know, ranges from uh, having an actual cooldown on it, but you know, uh, having an effect whenever you play your unit, uh, maybe having an effect when you actually click your leader ability, yep. etc. Yeah, I hope uh, all the viewers have got their screenshot buttons ready because uh, there's going to be a lot to unpack with this card. Let's take a quick look again at uh, the curses just so people can, can screenshot it or can talk about it with uh, their companions because, yeah, there's a lot of combinations as well that are possible with this card. And um, as a reminder exactly. as well, you are able to play your pre-designed uh, leader ability before you actually play Renfri on the board. So you can make use of that, then play Renfri and create a completely self-made new leader ability for you to use then afterwards yeah. in the game. And not only you can, but you definitely should. Yeah. Because, uh, well, your previous leader ability, you're not getting it back, right? So better make use of it while you still have it. Yeah. Now um, I can imagine that this was quite challenging to design. Yeah, and, and that's what I want to talk about. Uh, well. Neutral cards in Gwen, they are always, uh, they can be hard to land properly, right? Uh, but it's even more so when there's so much expectations uh, on them. And uh, basically, what ended up inspiring is, you know, with Renfrey's cult status in the community, uh, we thought that it could be pretty cool to have a card that actually lets you create custom uh, effects, right? Custom abilities. Uh, kind of a tr as a tribute uh, to the community to creating all of these custom. Yeah, that's awesome. So instead of creating a custom card, a custom leader ability for everyone to play around with. Coming into the game uh, just in two days. Two days, can yeah. you imagine, man? We've been talking and playtesting this uh, whole expansion for a while now, and uh, I'm super excited for players, players to finally get their hands on it and, and check it out, yeah? All right. And uh, yeah, to to come back a bit to Renfri's gang. Mm -hmm. Well, since you're missing out on all of these regular consistency tools, 
um, you're gonna have to make do with consistency tools, which, you know, um, were not as reliable, right? We're more soft. Uh, so stuff like Nickers and Roach, yeah. uh, maybe Future King, Maxis. And Renfrew's Gangs uh, completely falls into that line of being a card that offer offers some soft consistency through deck thinning, um, but also is going to offer some tempo, right? Uh, acting as a 12 point for uh, 10 provision. Yeah, especially if you then, uh, yeah, as you said, you, you kind of want to find Renfri if you're playing a deck around her, so this is going to make it a little bit easier to find her consistency. Okay, perfect. So I think after this, whole reveal, um, I think it's time to take a step back and take a quick look at the upcoming balance changes that we've also uh, introduced into the next patch. What do you want to start with? Um, so first of all, I guess we did some tweaking uh, to the way the evolving cards from Master Mirror uh, behave. Mm -hmm. So let's go through that. Um, so, yeah, as a reminder, the six evolving cards from Master Mirror. Um, basically, with the introduction of Infusion, we decided uh, that we wanted to slightly change how these evolving cards behave. Uh, and what this means is that when they transform, they will actually now carry over any power change, but also a uh, possible status that they have on them, which Ooh. means infused Oh. Um, so yeah, if we can take an example, uh, like eight Nimodor, right? Uh, if uh, she's boosted to nine from she's originally six power, well, uh, it, she used to transform into Etne Wrath of, of the Brokilon and and well, you know, lose all the hand buff. All, all lose all hand buff. Now she will actually transform and be thirteen power, right? Because um, the base power of the card is 10, and she was already boosted by 3, so that carries over to be 13. All right, I uh, think that makes a lot of sense, yeah. That we, and similarly, in, in Northguard, it means that cultist categories that have been infused will be carried over, mm -hmm. uh, etc. And to reflect that change in behavior, we've actually changed the line for all of these cards. And then instead of saying transform, they will now say evolve. So we're actually making them officially into <laughs> evolving cards. Yeah, I think that makes sense since transforms usually create a new card, so losing all the old stuff. So evolving, going to be evolving all around the board now. And I think people are going to be happy to see that because uh, I think some people, especially for uh, Skirtel, have been asking for it for a while. And um, I think this change now with the infused keyword makes a lot of sense to combine it. All right, another change um, coming soon is about Ornit Sensor, right? And uh, I think there's been some discussion around this card, especially because it's had the potential, it had the potential to be very swingy uh, in its points. So tell me what we decided on now. Yeah, so uh, the previous iteration of Ornit Sensor wasn't a card that we were very happy with. Uh, to be fair, for reasons that were quite similar to the reason players were not happy with this card. Uh, you know, the lack of counter plays that there was around it, uh, but also the randomness factor that was built into the card. Mm -hmm. um, and for these reasons, we've decided to go for a complete rework. Um, and we've taken inspiration from Becker Twisted Mirror from Betagwent. Uh, so basically, the card is going to serve as a payoff. Uh, if you have a damage intensive game plan, so it's going to be able to like, boost your unit. But also, can it serve as like an emergency removal tool if your deck is also able to activate through some boosting? All right, very interesting. Um, I'm still excited to see some highlight clips with this card because uh, I think there's still some really awesome uh, payoffs that you can achieve with it. All right. Moving on uh, from the neutrals into a faction that is dear to my heart, Skelliger. Um, but we did have to touch upon one of its staple cards a little bit, right? So Melazine now lost its all around veil and now only gains it on deploy. Yep. 
Um, so the main thing that this changes is that uh, if you replay Melusinaire through Sifufa's Riot or Fukushima, it will actually get doomed because, well, uh, at that point you don't actually have Veil, right? You mm -hmm. only gain it uh, on deploy. Uh, and the direct impact of this is that Fukushima will now be limited to being resurrected only once per match. You mean uh, Basically, we've been too lenient with Southwound. Yeah. Uh, and, well, the ability of the deck to harass, you know, by mul resurrecting Melisene over and over, <laughs> um, unless the card was actually answered for each wave. Yeah, th that, that was a bit too much. I think no complaints on that front. So let's move on to Syndicate. And Syndicate has gotten a few changes. The first one we want to talk about is Salamandra Change, who now has to pay a higher tribute. Instead of four, the tribute is at five. Yep. Uh, Salamandra Mage has been a very high value card since we tweaked it in 9.2. Uh, and it was acting like, you know, as a key piece I, uh, if you add a tribute gameplay. And this made a lot of sense back then because, well, the archetype wasn't performing well and we were attempting to make it better, but it is really not warranted anymore. Uh, well, it's like one of the top deck of the meta yeah. uh, and probably one of the best way you can spend your coins. Uh, being the tribute is uh, at least six points if you're able to land all the damage uh, for free coins thanks to the passive. Uh, uh, and that's without accounting for off the book or even playing Salamandra Mage if you already have Adrenaline. Um, the increase of the tribute makes that uh, payoff slightly worse, but most importantly, it's actually making the setup less flexible mm -hmm. uh, because you'll need more coins in your pocket in the first place to be able to go for it. Uh, and uh, I think this is where value, most of the value will actually be lost. All right, seems fair. Moving on to the next card out of the Syndicate faction, and we've got a scenario that we took another look at. Um, One Night at the Past Flora is now its name, so we've got a name expansion. Uh, and also, we moved around the chapters once again because uh, we feel like um, Maybe you can tell me more about it, but I feel like this is more ad adequate to the current yeah. state of the game. Yeah. So to be very clear, this is a buff. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> um, basically, with the introduction of the new scenarios, uh, it kind of led us to we take a look at Passiflora, uh, which I've not recently lately. Uh, and yeah, we decided to revert to uh, previous order that it was uh, using. So you know, spawning the Slice Electros first, uh, then the passive flower RPGs, and only then uh, gaining coins. Okay. Uh, basically, yeah, like, it, it, this order used to be deemed too strong, um, but the state of the game has changed, and we think that nowadays this is the kind of stuff that we're expecting. Uh, on top of this, we also added the Blind Eye category to Fist Tech Trafficker. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you gotta keep up with the times. You gotta change your business model if you're running a passive flora. <laughs> so mm -hmm. now maybe it's a bit more adequate. So let's take a look at Scoyatel. And we've got Farseer first, who uh, now you have to pay one more provision for if you want to run Farseers in your deck. Yeah, uh, so this change is uh, slightly more complex, right? Because Farseer was indeed uh, performing very strongly and uh, making Ember feel good. It wasn't actually pushing the deck over the edge. The real reason uh, we're making that uh, nerf is because we expect the hand buff deck to be performing quite well with Renfri, uh, since you know it's already a pretty unique, unique centric deck. Yep. Um, and so this is actually a preemptive nerf uh, to uh, this deck incorporating Renfri. Yeah, I mean we. Play tested, and uh, I think this has definitely uh, stood out as a card that is a little bit too powerful. So now you've got to pay a bit more, uh, especially because it's a bronze card. You usually run two of those. You've got to pay two more provision in total for your deck, so it should have a significant impact on your deck building condition. All right, moving on to uh, the rest of the cards that we want to take a look at for Squirtle right now, and those are the Dried Fledgling, gaining a. Point, uh, power point 
Forest Whisperer losing a provision but also losing a power point and then Percival losing a provision. So all around um, a bit cheaper, a bit more powerful uh, tools for Scoretel to play with. Yeah, uh, so in the case of Dragon Fledgling, uh, this is an attempt at two things. Uh, the first one is actually kind of breaking the status of being a token card yep. that Dragon Fledgling are. Uh, so we hope that at 5 power it's going to feel way better to include, um, especially considering it's your only 4 provision Omni card. Mm -hmm. Um, but it also have it, it's also going to have the effect of buffing uh, Water of Brokilon, um, yes. uh, which basically gets right off the bat two more points. Yeah, two more points um, can mean a lot, especially if you're playing Harmony, because that uh, soon and quickly gets out of hand and out of the removal threat yeah. range. Yeah, that makes them quite harder to remove. Uh, uh, in the case of Forest Whisperer, uh, so we've made the card more affordable. Uh, especially considering that the Poison Back Edge actually shares some cards with Harmony, so mm -hmm. this is something you might consider in your deck building. And finally, uh, Percival has been you know, adjusted to be kind of more in line with the standards of nowadays. And uh, we've also changed uh, Glynis and Sir Squiretooth to have the same provision reduction, since they basically share the same design, design pattern. Yep. I actually uh, played Percival in a Harmony deck like recently on the, the Pride stream and mm -hmm. that was the first time that I realized that uh, you can actually see Percival Percival's reflection in the armor that he's basically playing against as an opponent and um, it's, it's, it's such a cute card. I wonder, you know, do you actually know if Percival is able to play himself in the Gwent game that he's playing? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Got you on the spot there. All right. Anyways, uh, moving on to the next faction, we've got monsters up next. And monsters, uh, as you said, we were taking a look at the Thrive archetype. So the first change that we made is to the Necker Warrior, who has seven points now, and uh, a new ability reading: Deploy. If this card would not trigger any of your Thrive units, damage self by three and infuse self with Thrive. Pretty cool. To be first. To be fair, it's also the only change we've made <laughs> to Monster. Um, but, but yeah, uh, basically, um, previously we've looked at uh, four provision engine, which only had the keyword. Uh, so uh, it's the turn of Necker Warrior. Um, so we're using the same condition as the scenario, right? Uh, if you would trigger your five unit. Mm -hmm. um, and that way, the card can both serve as a way to trigger your five units, uh, basically acting as like a seven-point body. But if you do not meet the condition, then it basically comes back uh, to its original state of being a four-four record with five. An interesting thing to note is that uh, because the card gets infused added as it is being played, it is still be able to trigger the scenario. Ah. Uh, if did not have a five, like if it didn't trigger a five unit, right? As long as it infused itself with five, then it's going to trigger the scenario. Yeah, it's it's. I think this is a pretty cool card design because it's <laughs> it's kind of two cards in one, but it's yep. just going to be depending on the situation you play it in. All right, now let's take a look at Northern Realms, and uh, I know you've got quite a few changes that you want to cover for this faction because. Um, you took a, a deeper look into a yeah. archetype right here. So let's take a look. Yes, first of all, uh, a new leader ability for them, right? Uh, so Royal Inspiration was our last uh, cooldown leader ability, which were leader abilities we were not very fan of and had started kind of rolling out of the game, right? The previous one was uh, the one that we were worked to be supporting pirates. Um, well, so I guess I'm, I'm going to read the effects. Uh, uh, on order, you boost an eye unit by five. If it triggered, if that boost triggered an eye unit's grace ability, then you get the uh, you get the order back, though with one less point. What it means is that in theory you can get up to 15 points, mm -hmm. and there's a lot for your other ability. But uh, being able to eat the refresh every time is actually going to require some setup. Uh, and to carefully lay out your boost on the board so you might not get it every time. 
All right, so with the new Grace keyword and uh, this Royal Inspiration mm -hmm. version, um, I'm, I'm, I was muted for you. I wasn't muted for the recording. I'm sorry for that. <laughs> but it's quite important that you hear me. So, all right, so with the new Grace keyword coming to the Northern Realms faction and the uh, new version, the updated version of Royal Inspiration, I think it's quite clever to bring your Ignis, your Scorches and your Tor removals if you're playing against Northern Realms. Um, and yeah, let's take a look at the next change. Uh, it's to the card Mad Charge. It's been a while since I've seen this card, to be honest. Yeah, uh, Mad Charge actually already shared uh, the Legion, shared the, uh, the change to that card already since it is actually used on Damsel in Distress. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, basically we've tweaked it to provide value quicker, though it also comes to the cost of being more knight-centric. The condition used to be if you have a knight, the condition is now if you're actually using it on a knight. Yep. All right, makes, chain, uh, ma ma makes sense because, uh, yeah, knights do try to charge into battle occasionally. So let's take a look at a blade that um, some people had questions about, I think, as well. Uh, it's Vandergrift's blade, and now it reads, deploy, damage an enemy unit by five, and death blow, store destroyed units based power. The next time you play a unit, boost it by the stored amount and then destroy self. Yeah, so another card that's going to be quite useful to set up your knight's graces. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, it both acts as like removal, proactive boost. It's handy. It's handy. Uh, maybe a bit uh, more handy than the sword actually looks. It looks quite heavy and, and uh, unhandy, but <laughs> the ability should be quite interesting. And now, the final thing we want to take a look at, the rest of the cards that uh, you touched upon, giving graces here and there. <laughs> yeah, um, coming back to a bunch of the knights, uh, giving them extra grace payoffs, mm -hmm. which, you know, makes more sense uh, considering your leader ability and your scenario. Uh, and it's actually a pretty neat way of making these cards uh, look you know, a bit more sexy. Yeah. Um, and yeah, like the Knight Archetype is basically a completely new one. Uh, so we'll be monitoring uh, quite closely how it is performing and you know, potentially print more Knight support. Yeah, and just as a reminder for the people that maybe missed it during last week, Grace only triggers the first time you reach it, right? And yes. um, that means if you've reached, let's say, 12 power on Reynard Odo, it will then instantaneously boost all boosted allied units by one. And uh, in general, I, I, I'm happy to see Reynard get a little bit of a, a boost, more power, less provision, additional ability, because he's such a cool character from Thronebreaker. Okay. And that covers all the balance changes that we're going to cover, that we're going to talk about um, today. Uh, hopefully they complement the new and upcoming cards nicely. So, yeah, I think, do you have any additions to the balance changes? Um, I think there was something about the premium. Yeah, exactly. We do have to mention that the premiums in uh, the Black Sun expansion won't have the sound in the full screen preview. So if you're in the full screen and uh, yeah, don't don't be alerted. It's not your device that uh, has a has an issue. Uh, it will be fixed in the next update afterwards. So 10.8 should be the fix for that. Um, and yeah, I think we've got one more thing to announce. Yeah. We've got something special to celebrate the release of the expansion, right? Yeah, one last surprise. Uh -huh. um, so during the first week of the release, uh, there's actually going to be a new seasonal that's going to be unique to it, uh, which we named Trial of Fire. And when you enter a match of that seasonal, uh, your deck is going to be completely replaced mm -hmm. by a deck that we pre-built uh, of the same faction. And which is going to include, you know, uh, cards from uh, the expansion, obviously. Uh, these decks they are not quite meant to be competitive. In fact, uh, they've been pur purposefully made uh, to have fewer provision. But basically, the goal is, you know, to provide a fun and laid-back environment if you just 
like to try the new cards before you craft them, or you know, just because uh, you you want to test them uh, in a more carefree way. Also, great way for content creators to grab footage of cards that they don't own yet and uh, that they want to create content around. And in general, uh, yeah, I think people that usually play seasonal mode and um, craft their own decks, obviously you will be able to play your own decks afterwards once again in the next seasonal mode. Um, it's only going to be here for a week, I believe, right? Yeah. And um, yeah, in that week you'll be able to test the new cards, which is, um, I think, a cool new idea and we'll try to keep this kind of uh, um, concept yeah, it's, going. It's likely something we'll keep doing uh, in the future and uh, though we'll obviously listen to feedbacks and you know uh, change the phone life in the changes. Exactly, yeah. As John said, we'll keep listening to feedback, so do keep commenting on our videos, on our Twitter timeline, on Reddit, on Discord. Uh, we truly appreciate it and yeah. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I think this is uh, going to be a nice wrap up for uh, this pre-final segment for this depth video and uh, I can't wait. So let's let's all watch uh, the finals, the grand finals together and then it's already Monday and Monday means it's nearly Tuesday and Tuesday is when the expansion drops. So I'm excited. Thank you so much for joining me, Jean. Thank you. Thank you. I uh, like we really bought our art in, in this expansion. <laughs> yeah. We hope everyone is going to enjoy, enjoy it as much as we enjoy making it. And exactly. yeah, let's watch the final. Yeah, exactly. Thank you all for watching. Thank you for the partners as well for being a part of this real campaign. Thank you all for the designers as well, especially all the people working in the background and um, trying to make this as exciting as possible. And now good luck to the contestants. See you, everyone. Bye.